Hey guys, welcome back to part 5 of the Kotlin tutorial. So in the last video we learned what variables are and how we can use them. And we also learned that since Kotlin is a statically typed programming language, each variable needs a type assigned to it. We can either assign this type ourselves or let the compiler infer it from the value we assign to the variable. In any case, every variable needs a type before we can compile our code. And so far we use two different types, string for text and integer or short int for whole numbers. And your homework was to take a look at the primitives kt file. This file contains the source code for some more types we can use, specifically the basic number types. And when we press Ctrl F and search for class, we will get six results. For now you don't have to understand what class means, you just have to understand that these are types we can use for our variables. And we have four types for whole numbers, byte, short, int, which we already know, and long. And then we have two types for floating point numbers. So numbers with a decimal point and a fraction, like 1.4, which are float and double. These different number types differ in the amount of bits they take up in the computer's memory, which we can see by these comments above these classes. So a byte takes eight bits, short takes 16 bits, int 32, long 64, float 32, and double 64. Now without going too much into the computer science details here, the number of bits dictates how big of a number we can put into a variable. And the limit for each type is also described in this min and max value variables. So in an 8-bit byte, we can store whole numbers between minus 128 and plus 127. And as you can see, this value doesn't grow linearly with the amount of bits, it grows exponentially because of the way numbers are stored in bits. As said, I don't want to explain this in detail here, but you can research this yourself as your homework. Just type something like how do bits work into Google and you will find lots of explanations. So in a variable of type short, we can already store a value of 32,767 and with int, we are already above 2.1 billion. Int is also the default type for whole numbers. This is why our age variable in the last video was automatically inferred as the type int, even though the value 28 would have easily fit into a short or even a byte. But for most normal numbers like the age or the hour of a day, and for normal math operations, you will use int even if the values are small or long if you ever exceed the max value of int. But byte and short are usually only used in specific cases, especially when we need them in very huge amounts. But you don't use byte or short for normal math operations, just to keep that in mind. But if you need fractionals like 1.2 or 1.4, you have to use float or double. Double is the default value for floating point numbers because it's more precise. And just like int for whole numbers, double is inferred whenever you assign a decimal number to a variable without specifying its type explicitly. And floats, just like bytes and shorts, are usually used in cases where we need them in huge amounts. Double stands for double precision floating point, but even though it's more precise than normal floats, it's still not 100% precise. So if you work with decimal numbers, you will always have rounding errors. This has to do with how these numbers are stored in bits. Again, you can research this on your own as your homework. And as a summary, the most common number types you will encounter are int and double. And besides these types, this primitives kt file also contains functions that we can use on these types to do operations with them. We will see an example of this in a moment and then we close this file and go back to our Kotlin tutorial kt file where we delete this println line and then we change the name of our variables. I'm gonna change username to a example string, age to a example number, and then I change this from raw to val as well to make it immutable. Now when we assign a number or text to a variable directly like this, we also call this a literal or a literal constant because it contains the literal representation of this value and not a symbolic name. Because when we type in 28, this will always have the value 28 and never be a 26, for example. Now instead of decimal form, we can also assign a number in hexadecimal or binary form, which we will not cover here because they are not very common. But again, you can research this on your own. 
Now at the moment this variable is of type int. But when we make this number very large, so it exceeds the max value of int, which was 2.1 something billion, then this value automatically turns into a long. So again the compiler is smart enough to automatically infer this. Alternatively, if we want to make this variable a long, but assign a smaller value, we can add the l suffix, which turns this into a long literal, and our variable is still of type long. Or of course we can also declare the type explicitly. If we want to use byte or short, we also have to declare the type explicitly, because as we already know, otherwise this will be inferred as int. When we add a decimal point, this will automatically turn into a double, which is the default type for floating point numbers. If we want to have it as a float, we have to add the f suffix, which turns this into a float literal, and this variable into the float type. And for floating point numbers, we can also use the scientific notation by adding an e and an exponent. So this would be a 2.8 times 10 to the power of 3, which would be a 2800. And we can also make this exponent negative, which would turn this into a 0.0028. But in most cases, you will just use normal floating point numbers like this. When we have large numbers, we can also separate digits with underscores. This is the same as 2 million point 0.8. We can actually add as many underscores as we want. It still has the same effect. But there are certain positions where we cannot add these underscores, like right at the front of a number or next to the point, but the IDE will warn you about this. Now these six number types are also called primitive types, because they are stored differently in the memory of the computer than more complex types. And Java developers will have noticed that we used all these types with a capital first letter. So for example when we used an int, we wrote int with a capital I and not with a lowercase i, like we know it from Java. This is because in Kotlin we don't use primitive types directly. We always interact with objects. However, the compiler will turn these objects into primitive types whenever possible, because it's more efficient. And I want to repeat one last time that if you are a beginner, you don't have to understand these Java parts. They are just additional information for people that already have Java experience. You should still listen to it, but you don't have to understand it. I just want to make that clear, but in the future I won't repeat it again, because it will be annoying after a while. Now it's important to note that a smaller number type will not be automatically converted to a bigger number type. So when we have an int variable, and we try to assign this to a long, we will get an error, even though this int would easily fit into a long variable. And the same also applies to floats and doubles and the smaller number types. Instead we have to call dot to long to convert it explicitly. Now this int will be turned into a long and the value is still 2 million. Now what we are doing here is calling a function on this number to let it do something. This is one of the functions that you found in the primitives kt file. But we will learn more about these member functions later. For now you only have to know that we use this to turn a number from one type to another type. We can also convert our numbers to smaller types with for example 2 byte or 2 short. And we can convert floating point numbers to whole numbers. But both of these operations will have side effects. For example when we convert the double to a long we will lose the decimal point and the fraction. So our example long will have the value 2 million. Besides our six number types, we have two more primitive types, which are not numbers, and those are char and boolean. They both have their own files, that's why you didn't find them in primitives kt, and they also have their own literal representation. If we want to create a char, we make single quotes, not to confuse with double quotes, which we use for strings. For a char, we use single quotes, and then we can put a single character in here, like an a, or a one, or a question mark. And the other type, boolean, can be either true or false. And we will often use boolean later to change the control flow of our program. So we can say if a certain condition is false, do something. And if it's true, do something else. And for Java developers, it's interesting to know that we can't use chars as integers. So when we create an int variable, and try to assign it to an example char, this won't work, because unlike in Java, chars are not numbers, 
but we can turn it into numbers with the same conversion methods, like toInt. This will turn this question mark into its number representation. And vice versa, you can change a number into a char with the toChar function, but you will probably not need this very often. It's just good to know. Okay, so those are the eight different primitive types. Byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean. String is not a primitive type, which again means it's stored a bit differently in the memory of the computer. In Kotlin, this doesn't really make a difference for us in how we interact with these variables. The difference basically only matters under the hood. However, just like our primitive types, strings have special language support. They are so common that they have their own literal representation, which as we already know, is a sequence of characters surrounded by double quotes. If we want to add a line break in here, we have to write backslash n. We can't just type it directly in here, because it would be concatenated to a one line. But with a backslash n we can write over multiple lines. And if we want to escape certain characters, like our dollar sign in the last video, or for example a quotation mark, we use a backslash as well. So if I want to surround my name with quotation marks, I would do it like this. Otherwise, this would just end the string right here. So when we uh, print this, it will look like this. My name surrounded with quotation marks over two lines. But we can also create a so-called raw string. For this we make a pair of quotation marks. Then we go behind the closing quotation mark and add another quotation mark. This will automatically create three quotation marks before the cursor and three behind it, so a total of six. And in here we can basically type anything without having to escape special characters. And we can also write over multiple lines, like this. Now the IDE automatically adds this trim margin function call. This will remove this vertical bar it automatically added, as well as the space in front of it. And this is just a helper to maintain the formatting. Because if we would take this away, it would take all this here into the string as well. So instead we would have to write it like this, which also works. But it's not very good code formatting. Anyways, when we uh, print this, it prints our text pretty much exactly as we typed it into the editor. Okay, we are almost done for this video, just one more thing. We already learned that in some situations we have to declare the type of a variable explicitly. For example, when we use a number as a byte or short. But we also have to declare the type explicitly when we only want to declare a variable, but not assign a value to it immediately. So when we remove this, we get an error. Because the compiler doesn't know what type this variable is supposed to have. So we have to write explicitly that we want to have a double, and this warning disappears. But before we can use it, we have to assign a value to it. So we can take our example number and assign the same value as before. And everything will work again. This part up here is called declaration. We declare a variable. This part down here, where we assign the value for the first time, is called initialization. We initialize this variable because we give it its initial value, its first value in other words. Okay, that's enough for now. We will learn how we can create our own types later. And remember your homework, which was to research how bits work in a computer and how they are used to store numbers and why floating point numbers that we store with bits are imprecise. This stuff is not important for the future parts of this tutorial, but it's interesting to know. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of this Kotlin course. Take care.